So, how much rent do you owe, And why would you never come to me before eviction? We didn't want to burden you, but Papa. How much? It's not a matter of how much. Just like, help me out here now. No, you is my child. How much? It's not much, Papa. It's about six months. Six months rent? <laughs> no, Papa. We want to know if you can allow us to come and live with you for six months. We're bankrupt. Tell him he's your father. He will understand. No. Me no understand a backside. <laughs> I used to drink mad because you were in your shan. Hmm? Not to over my dead mother banana walk. When Bud left, the nest did not come back. Then turn out the fight storm. But I'm more brains than you. Hmm? Not even six hours. If you want to come tell me, say, when we know we can't do what we can't do. Hmm? And tell me, oh, my, my chimney, chip up, chip up. I'm a foot tile it in my house. Shoe rich. So hi everyone and welcome back to another of my videos. I do hope you enjoyed that snippet of that uh, production that you just saw that was Pressure Drop done by Basil Dawkins or produced by Basil Dawkins production several years ago. Yeah, it was really a beautiful production. Now we want to continue as creatives to bring you enjoyable um, performances and as we do so, we also want to do it in an environment that does not compromise the health and the safety of all the persons who are involved in the process. This painting looks like me don't. I, I am being distracted by it for some reason because I'm looking at my, 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 my hair and I'm, and I'm seeing the painting beside me and I'm saying to myself, what, that person here look like me. Same hair, same kind of facial features. Look at the neck part, you see that? Could I? Same kind of long neck kind of vibe. It looks so much like me. And to think, when I acquired this painting, I didn't have this short hair. My hair was long. I had locks all the way down to my back. I think the artist was onto something at the time, eh? Anyway, I digress. Let me get right back to the video. Right. So I was saying that today we are going to talk health and safety in the theater. Now, what many people don't realize or don't know is that the theater, if the production process itself can really be a hazardous one, especially when you're doing a play that is very physically taxing and has elaborate scenic design and set, etc. and a lot to be done. It can really be, um, can really be hazardous. And so therefore, knowing that, we have to ensure that as we create, we are creating an environment that protects all involved from the production team to the audience right and when i talk about creating an environment that is not hazardous i'm not speaking only about a physical space in terms of what it should look like etc but we're also talking about the human practices that goes on within that particular space or the things that we do and how it is that we do them we need to have guidelines that guides us and guide everybody involved in the process just to ensure that we are being compliant and we are maintaining a safe environment. Now, before I get into the video, I just want to say thank you so much to all the persons who've already subscribed to my channel. Thanks to those who are always commenting and always sharing the video. So if you are new to the channel, I just want to take the moment to say thank you for stopping by and tuning in. And if you're watching, this video and you've not yet subscribed to my channel, I'm going to invite you to just take a moment and hit the subscribe button. But while you're also at it, turn your post notification bell on so that the moment I post a video, you will be notified. So know that that is out of the way. We're going to go ahead and get straight into today's video. Health and safety in the theater. Now, before we get into all the guidelines, I'm going to ask you two questions. And then at the end of the, the video, then we will see if we can answer the two questions based on the information that will be given in the, in, in the general video. So the first question is, what should you do if there is an accident during a rehearsal? What should you do if there is an accident during a rehearsal? And the options are there, so you decide what the option is. Let the injured individual take care of his or her injury. Report all accidents immediately. Scream for help. Remove yourself 
from the space. All right, so we will see what the response is. The second question, of course, is a true and false question, and it says, all first aid kits must have pills and medicine to be administ administered by the stage manager. So all first aid kits must have pills and medicine to be administered by the stage manager. Like I said, at the end of the video, we will look at what the answer is. Safety inspections and compliance. Now, within the theater, when we're thinking about safety, and as we go through the guidelines, we're going to break it down in some different parts. And the first category that we're looking at is safety inspection and compliance. And there are some things within the theater, it's natural for us to be able to do the inspection because you don't want to wait until you're having a show to do the inspection, but you must always inspect particular things within the space. Flooring, for example, because you don't want that to be a hazard to the dancers who might be dancing or the performers who are walking and tripping over things. So the flooring must always be in good quality conditions. So you want to make sure you have your constant inspection for that. You're inspecting electrical equipment, you're inspecting um, beams, you're inspecting any other equipment. And so it is important to have somebody assigned to do that kind of inspection, not only when there is a performance, but have scheduled inspection so that the appropriate maintenance of the various areas and equipment can be carried out. And so we are going to start by looking at the first one here that says the stage beams and trust used for rigging must be maintained and inspected on a regular basis. And if you look at this small image right here, here you have the beam going across. And this beam is what must be inspected to ensure that it is not rust, it's not breaking, it's not falling apart. And so it is in condition where it can actually hold all the lanterns and the right amount of lanterns as well, so that during a performance at any point in time, it does not fall apart. Yeah, all lighting and sound equipment must be properly maintained and inspected on a regular basis. You also want to check your lanterns because you want to make sure that the cords on it, they are connected properly and they are working and there is nothing grounding on the other where it's not supposed to be grounding. The plugs themselves, they are also working and in condition that are not hazardous and may set off a fire or may electrocute somebody. We don't want any of those things to to happen so we have to do the check on a regular basis and even before doing the rigging you also want to do a check of the lanterns that you're hanging on the actual beam third while rigging and hanging lights no one should be standing directly beneath the lantern and if you must be there wear a hard hat and this is particularly important because Yes, sometimes you may have one person who is working and doing the rigging, but sometimes there might be another person who is assisting with the work and you must be on the ground. And if you're on the ground, you need to ensure that you're wearing a hard hat. However, if you're not supposed to be in that space and you're not working, stay away from the beams, stay away from the hanging lights because you don't want anything to fall in anybody's head. And so you have to protect yourselves in that regard. And the other one is that the lanterns must be securely fastened when they are hung. So always double check. So if you look at the lights that are hanging here, now if you should hang any light, always make sure that you double check, yeah? Double check that they are secured before you remove from the space and move into something else. So we are moving on from the lanterns and we're going to be looking at the space itself or aspects of the space and some other things. Now, all entrances and exits must remain unobstructed at all times. And remember that persons are entering an exit and if there is an emergency, persons need to be able to move freely. Yes, so that you're not trampling over each other or you're not falling over things. And even if there's no emergency, if there's something within the entrance and the exit areas, it runs the risk of persons tripping and falling over these things. And you do not want that to happen. 
yeah and this segues into our backstage areas because you want to make sure that the backstage areas and the wings they are clear of all objects yes if you look at this image right here this is a picture of a theater and we're looking at the wings you notice how clear the wings are and that is what you want to do within the theater you want to ensure that these areas remain clear because remember the actors have or the performers they must run off stage during a blackout or they are going to enter and this happens real quickly and at the same time we have the stage hands who are moving by changing around the set and bringing on new things and set pieces and taking them off and so therefore you do not want to have anything that is obstructing the movement as you're going along and remember that the performers go off in a blackout not all spaces will have a little work light that allows persons to be able to see clearly and so because of that you want free space for persons to move if the stage hands are going to be entering and changing the set at the same time then there has to be some amount of coordination that is happening and this has to happen before the actual performance so you know as a performer where do you go as well as the stage hands will know where to go and where to position self with whatever set pieces they have so that there's no collision in the dark whenever there is a blackout the next thing is that limit use of extension cords where possible we're using them is absolutely necessary ensure they do not stretch across the busy thoroughfare and if they do secure them to the ground so that they do not become tripping hazards now how many times have you been to a space and when you're seeing cords all the way on the ground and even you yourself sometimes become a victim of tripping on these things and you know get very close to falling some persons even fall now within the theater you want to make sure that that doesn't happen and one way is to really limit the use of the extension cords that we have spreading across different spaces but if we must use them we need to ensure that we secure them on the ground so they are not tripping as so my feet or your feet cannot go beneath these cords and run the risk of us falling over the fourth thing is that the risers or the platforms must be sturdy risers slash platforms must be sturdy now when you put those platforms either on the stage for the performers to stand on or you put them in the audience where the audience members will sit or wherever they are if they are not sturdy you are going to find that they're either going to fall through the audience members or whoever stand on it will fall through the top or the, the legs of these platforms might come apart and that's going to be dangerous and so we know the various things that can happen and we don't want that to happen so we need to ensure that these riders and platforms that we are using that they are sturdy and now another category in the safety and inspection and compliance component that we're going to be looking at we're looking at signage and this is this has to do with signs just putting up signs that can allow persons to to, to help to be knowledgeable and know what are the guidelines that they are going to be working with and so you want to ensure that the instructions for how to use and the safety tips for tools and equipment must be clearly posted yeah so therefore if it means that for example in order to operate a certain kind of machinery i need to use um hard hat or you have step-by-step -step instructions those must be clearly outlined in the workspace so that whenever anybody decides to go and utilize that equipment then the guidelines are there that guides individuals so it's up to us within the practice to therefore now adhere to those guidelines yes the containers that we keep substance in must be accurately labeled to reflect the contents of the container now very often we sometimes decide that you know what let me just pour a little of, of this of something in another container and what you might find happening is that bleach might be poured into a water bottle or you might catch some water in a bleach bottle or whatever it is paint might be poured in something else and then we don't label it so there's nothing wrong if we want to do substituting you know you want to substitute a container or you're going to pour it because you have too much to hold in this and you just want a little in this but once we do that we should label it 
clearly. So whoever comes and picks up that container will know exactly what is in that container because you don't want person stuff to be opening and looking and smelling, right? In order to decipher what is in um, a container because smelling in of itself can be quite hazardous. And you don't want to have persons putting things in their mouth too, that's, that's poisonous, that are poisonous. So therefore, labeling accurately Yes, it's not just any label, but labeling accurately is important. Now, entrances and exits for the theater must be visibly labeled at all times. Remember that performance happens in the dark and sometimes persons have to move for whatever reason. So ensure too that the signs are very clear so persons know where they are going. And so persons don't wander around and trying to find where do I need to enter, where do I need to exit, and may collide in things and hurt self because they are not familiar with the space. Next one is that you should inform your audience about the use of special effects, right? Lights, for example, strobes, because of the kind of um because of the kind of impact that some of these special effects like like a strobe could have on someone if someone has epilepsy you have to be mindful how it is that um we use these lights and so one of the ways to inform your audience is to put a sign at the very entrance of the theater space so they are aware and then the announcement can also be made again through audio at the start of the performance that will help to provide the information. And so overall in working with signs and labeling things in the theater, you must make sure that all the signs are clear, legible and visible. Make sure we can see everything. So clear, I'm talking about understanding. Legible means I can read it and visible means it is obvious. Everybody can see it. It is important that we do that as a safety practice. Now, a major part of safety within the theater has to do with the human practices. Yes, it's up to us to do some of the things that will ensure that what compliance is taking place in order to keep us safe. And so in putting together, we need to ensure that the dressing rooms are always clean and orderly. Dressing rooms are always clean and orderly. And so therefore you don't want to just be spilling things all over the floor. We don't want to be throwing things all over the place because in the quick, in, in, in the rush of trying to change during and in between the performance and in between scenes within a dressing room, one will hurt self if things are not in order and, and, and it's not clean because you also remember you're taking off your clothes in this space, etc. And so there are a range of things that can happen within a dressing room. Another important thing about a dressing room is that all mirrors in dressing room should be securely mounted. And this is crucial because you don't want to have a mirror that in the rushing you bounce it, it falls off. It falls to the ground. It could fall on somebody's um somebody's feet. It could fall on, you know, somebody's back, wherever it is. But the fact of the matter is it can cause hurt even if it doesn't hit anybody but it can fall to the ground and splinters out and once it splinters then that means something or the residues might go in somebody's what in somebody's feet and you don't want that especially in the middle of a performance especially when you're rushing dashing etc and for god forbid there should be broken mirrors in the space ensure that it is cleaned up immediately as best as possible and the persons within that space should operate with caution all right next there should be no playing in the theater or workspace and so yeah why we look at studio spaces and theater spaces yes the stage is big and wide and we have a lot of space it is not in the interest of anybody to run around in this space freely and, and, and carelessly because in theater work is always happening and because work is always happening there's always danger around and especially the workspace and when I say workspace I'm talking about the workshop in particular because you have so many things sharp edges um wood boards so many things that can cause pain and so playing in those area or running around in those area strictly prohibited Next, do not play with props, tools, or equipment. They are not toys. 
they are not toys, the props, the props can be damaged, as well as some props are also as a dust and can cause danger, can cause harm. We know the same things about the tool and the equipment, and so do not play with them. Next, employ proper technique when lifting objects. Example, bend your knees, keep body, upper body erect, and push forward with the legs. And this is important because a number of times we are bending to lift things. And because, guess what? Because we are not um, employing proper technique, then we damage our backs, you know, our lower backs, our upper backs, or something may happen. And so, therefore, in order to avoid that, you want to employ the proper techniques. And that is why all these things are considered human practices. They are human work practices to ensure that we do the right thing for compliance and our own safety. The other thing is that the ladders of varying sizes must be available and kept in good condition. Now, in order to know if they're in good condition, you need to have the inspection. You don't wait until when it is that you're going to use it. Always double check to ensure that we have the different sizes. So we don't use a ladder that is too big for something um, that's not necessarily going to knock something over. Or you don't want to use a ladder that is too small and forces whoever is on the ladder to overextend self. Yeah, and then may end up having an accident. Next, protective gears must be worn at all times, such as the gloves, your eye goggles, your safety belts, your appropriate clothing, the hard shoes, etc. There's sometimes some of us have a tendency to, to say, oh, it's just one little thing I'm taking up, so I don't need to put on my protective gears. But that one little thing that you're taking up may very well be the thing that caused you harm. And so that is why you must wear your protective gears at all times. And so different ones are used for different things within the space, especially when you're working within the workshop. Next, wash hands thoroughly after working. All kinds of residues. And, and this is something that we know that we're supposed to do, wash our hands all the time. But sometimes we are working with some, um, you know, substances and other objects that really poison us, really dangerous. And so therefore you don't want to touch your body, you don't want to touch anybody else and you can't eat anything. So therefore you have to wash your own hands right after you're through working to ensure that what your own safety. Next thing, adhere to seating capacity. And this one in particular has to do with, of course, how we manage the space because sometimes within a theater, you might get excited because we have so many persons coming in, but you don't want to do what? You don't want to oversell your space because if there's an emergency and you have too many persons inside the space, then you run the risk of having a serious stampede or hurting each other, you know, especially if there's a fire, etc. So try and adhere to your seating capacity. And the other thing is that you want to make sure you report all accidents immediately. Yes, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it is an accident that can be taken care of by a nurse on spot, an accident where the individual can maybe take care of self, you know, an accident, you know, that has, that is very severe enough for the persons to go to the hospital. Report all accidents immediately to whomever is in charge, your producer, your director, etc. It is critical that that is done. Then we move on. There must be adequate supply of flashlights. And because theater happens in the dark inside the space, there are, you have reasons to be moving around. Some persons might come late and you need to see them. Not all theater spaces come with the fancy lights on the ground that allow your audience uh, members to be able to see. And so the ushers will need those flashlights because you don't want to have persons bumping into things or falling down the stairs, especially if they have to use steps to get to the seats that they are supposed to go to or they're exiting. But also for your own self backstage, the crew, there might be things that you have, you have to navigate that space around there and there might not be a work light. So you want to have adequate flashlights that can allow you to search for the things that you want to search for to protect yourself. Next, theater space and workshop must be adequately ventilated. So because we're using a range of special effects, sometimes you might use smoke machines, etc you want to make sure that, that that ventilation is there that absorbs all of that because it may negatively 
affect your audience members and even your crew members who are working with a lot of different substance, etc. Yeah. Third, all tools and equipment must be properly stored away in the workshop in a secured space. So then again, even though there's a responsibility for individuals not to play with equipment, not to be running around, but also as a part of that and to help with the accountability is to store the things away properly. Don't just leave them out in the space for the curious onlooker who will come into the space and decide to look at it, touch it, and then try to figure out how it works. You want to make sure that you secure everything. Put it away, put it out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. And the other one is that do not use a fire in the theater. It is not recommended. So if you're on stage, it's not recommended that you use fire on stage because of the potential risk of it getting out of control. Right. And if there's a case where it is mandatory based on what you're doing, that there must be a small speck of fire, then close by, you need to have your sandbags close by and you also need to have your um, your fire extinguisher close by in the, and persons on standby during that moment to be able to act in the event that it is needed. Another thing. Flammable materials must be stored in safe places. Again, know your things that are flammable. And that is why within your workshop space, you need to have somebody who's in charge of these things. So they know where to pack some things and they know what you're going to put where. And so everything is stored away and ensure that once they're used, they're returned to their spaces. Yeah. A functional fire extinguisher must be located according to the fire code regulations and it must be easily accessible. It must be easily accessible. And you have to make sure that the person who is close by knows how to use a fire extinguisher. Who will everybody on your team? So once the process starts, everybody on your team needs to know how to use that. So in the event, God forbid, that something happens and you need it, then the entire team is competent enough to be able to respond using a fire extinguisher. Clean up all spillage immediately. Now, this is something that we take for granted sometimes. So we spill a little water and we say, oh, I just put a bit of water. You walk away leaving it. Or, you know, you just say, when I'm finished, I'm going to wipe it up. No, do it immediately because somebody might be passing by and bam, step in it, slide. And they may not slide, but they step in the water and they move with it and the water moves with them and they go to another space and somebody gets hurt. And even you yourself might turn around and slip in that water, break a hand, break a leg, break a head, break a neck, etc. And so therefore you want to make sure you clean up all spillage immediately. Now we're going to move on to first aid procedures and responses. Now within the theater, it is important that you have a first aid kit with supplies. Yeah, at all times. So the kit or the supplies or wherever you want to have it, but you need to make sure that you have those on spot because they are going to be necessary in the space. Because remember, the performances can be physical and anything can happen to anybody. You can be dancing and hurt yourself. You can just simply be walking and colliding with each other. You just want to have some basic first aid things to assist you while you are um, while you are at it. You want to make sure that the first aid kit meet your international standards. Yeah, that's the best way to do it because you will ensure that you have all the things necessary. Not everyone will know how to do. Um, so we know first aid procedures. Not everyone has that kind of training, but it is recommended that if your team can have all or most persons who have that kind of first aid training, it will be at an advantage to the theater company or the persons who are performing. But some of the things you want to make sure that you have in your first aid, you want to have plasters, you want to have bandages, you want to have safety pins, you want tweezers, you want sticky tape, you want thermometer, you want the basic things that you can attend to an individual. And so my question for you while I'm at it, what else do you think need to be in a first aid kit? I want you to write that in the comment section about what should be in the first aid kit and then you know we can just share a bit of information however 
a key thing to note is that no medication should be distributed by anyone on the production team, well, unless you're a trained doctor. Apart from that, do not administer any medication at all. Allow those who are trained in the area to be able to do that. But nobody on the production team should administer any medication to anyone. Injuries and accidents. Now, you want to make sure that you report all injuries and accidents immediately. It doesn't matter how it is done. It doesn't matter the severity of it. It is important that that is known by your producer and by your director, as well as your stage manager. Yes, so report all injuries and accidents immediately because some things need to be checked out by a practitioner. So sometimes the things happen and we just diagnose ourselves or you know, diagnose each other and you leave it at that, no. Always make sure you check. Burns and bruises. Now, where the bruise is minor, for example, just a little scrape, and it may just need to be cleaned, perhaps with hydrogen peroxide or something like that. The stage manager or the assistant you know, could take on this task, or the individual who is injured could also do that particular um, task. Yeah? However, where it is more severe, you know, where your seat's bleeding, etc then medical attention must be sought. Don't sit with it and say, oh no man, the bleeding soon stop. Or, you know, you're trying there, trying to stop the bleeding all on your own. Seek medical attention from a practitioner. If there's a nurse close by there, whatever it is, go and get it looked after properly. And then you have sprains and strains. And this must be diagnosed by a medical practitioner. Now, sometimes we fall and we get a little hurt and our hand feels, you know, a little pain and it might start to swelling, a little swelling is happening. We tell ourselves, no man, it's just a little sprain or it's a little strain. And sometimes we actually have a fracture. And this, that's why it is necessary to have a practitioner look at it to ensure that what it is indeed a sprain or a strain and not necessarily a fracture. Right, so we don't diagnose ourselves and we don't take anything for granted. You want to make sure that you do what? Allow the practitioners to examine. Once they examine and we figure out what it is that is wrong, then you know how to treat. But we are not treating our own injuries. All right. Now, applying and removing makeup. Now, some performances require you to wear special makeup or some people just want to use their basic makeup. Now, when applying the makeup, you want to make sure that whatever it is that we are using to apply the makeup is clean. You don't want to have your skins breaking out into all kinds of things and, you know, different things are happening to persons, you know, rash because of dirt, etc. Ensure that whatever you're using to apply your makeup is clean. Encourage persons to use their personal makeup where possible. And so therefore, if you're putting a little foundation on your face because you're, you're keeping your face cool so that therefore when the light hits you, right, you're not shining. You want to use your own makeup, use your personal makeup. Yeah, where possible, some basic things. Wash hands thoroughly before applying your makeup and after applying your makeup always wash hands especially when you're doing your face or even if you're going to apply it on somebody else's face always wash your hands before and wash your hands after sanitize your products so the things that can be sanitized maybe the brush that you are using etc sanitize some of the products that are shared where possible now be clear about what is in the product. Know what you're allergic to because you put some things on your skin and you might have an allergic reaction. Yes, so have a procedure for how you deal with allergy responses to the different substances. And so therefore you need to know, have an idea what it is that you're putting on your skin. So if you have an allergic reaction, you know exactly what it is that would have given you that allergic reaction, yeah? Remove makeup. Now, the best thing to do when you're removing makeup from your from your, from the face is to follow the appropriate procedure for the makeup and try to use something that is alcohol free. Something that is alcohol free, so it is not harsh on the skin. It is that important. And follow the procedure for how to 
do the removal. It is important in order to ensure that what everyone remains safe. All right, so now that we have gone through those tips and those guidelines, you know, for safety within the theater, we're going to try and answer our question that we asked. And the question, what should you do if there's an accident during rehearsal? And remember, it's multiple choice option. And so you want the best response, right? You want the best response. Uh, I did a video on, you know, best ways to answer multiple choice question. If you've not seen that, I'm going to put that link in this video so you can get a chance to see it. So we have to go through our process of elimination and select what we think the best response is. So if option A said, let the injured individual take care of his or her own injury. Yes, that may not necessarily be the right approach because maybe the individual is injured to the point where he or she can't, <clears throat> right? It says report all accidents immediately. And we recall that in the presentation, it did say that no matter what, the severity of the injury is all accidents must be reported. C, scream for help. Uh, no, we're not to scream for help because not all things require us to scream for help. Yes, remove yourself from this space. I mean, that's our first thing we're going to eliminate because we want to all try to assist. And so based on this, the best possible response here would be to report all accidents immediately based on the information. Remember, we said that once the injury happened, it must be reported. The second one is a true and false question again. All first aid kit must have pills and medicine to be administered by the stage manager. Now, unless the stage manager is a trained medical practitioner, a doctor, etc., authorized to give medication. That's the only way the stage manager would be giving out any form of medication. And so because of that, the response to this would be false. Yeah, the response to this would be false. So now that we've answered those questions successfully, I'm going to now ask you another question and I call it the viewer's question. What are some of the other safety tips that are necessary for the theater that were not mentioned in the presentation? Again, what are some of the other safety tips that are necessary for the theater that were not mentioned in the presentation? Please, I invite you to put your responses in the comment section. So there you have it, safety in the theater. I trust and hope that the information was quite useful, it was quite informative, and you actually learned something from today's video. Let me know what it is that you've learned from the information that you did not know before. And while you're at it, share with me whatever safety procedures and tips that are in your theater space that would not have been mentioned in the video. And if they've been mentioned in the video and they're in your theater space and you see how it's worked, let me know what has been your experience with theater and safety as well. Let us keep a conversation going about safety in the theater. Put it in the comment section. Wherever you are in the world, I am open to hearing from you and engaging you in conversation. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Until I hear make another video, thank you so much for watching.